Welcome to the lecture series of Public Theology, a cooperation of the Berlin Institute for Public Theology, the Bayer's Now Day Center for Public Theology, and the Lutheran World Federation. Uh, at the end of this talk, it will hopefully be clear that the question concerning the theology in public theology is both uh, a very important question to ask and an impossible question to ask. In order, in order to argue this, I will make five brief comments, all of them controversial and contested for very good reasons. So first comment. It is notoriously difficult to agree on what public theology is, and for good reasons. In the rest of this lecture series, this will probably become clear in many ways. So this is the first comment. One could, for example, claim that public theology is theology that matters, theology that makes a difference in the ways in which people live in their communities, societies, our global world together. One then describes public theology by saying that it is all ways of doing theology that, that intentionally, deliberately, consciously want to make a difference to public life, hoping to contribute to human life together, striving to matter in our shared worlds. So, so one thereby then attempts to distinguish public theology from all kinds of theology that intentionally do not care about social, political, cultural, public life, for, for whatever reason. All kinds of theology, for example, that solely focus on the soul or spirituality or personal faith or liturgy or the church or whatever. However, it should be obvious that all these kinds of theology that intentionally do not care to matter in life, do indeed matter. And very often they matter very much. Precisely by closing their eyes and by ignoring our life together in the world, they actually matter very much to what happens in the world. Dietrich Bonhoeffer famously warned about this when he argued that inactivity and the reluctance to take sides and to get involved and to make a difference, that all of this is already a form of action and of taking sides. And in this process, he said of the church in his time, with sadness, they had become silent witnesses of evil deeds, perhaps no longer of any use. Yet, even if one would focus, when we speak about public theology, on the that intentionally matters, theology that deliberately hopes to make a difference to our common life together, then it is again possible to use very broad and inclusive descriptions of public theology on the one hand, or much narrower and more specific descriptions on the other. That is why many people prefer to exclude some forms of theology that most certainly do make a difference to life together from being legitimate public theology. They use narrower definitions in order to deliberately exclude other forms of theology that do make, that do matter, but that according to them should not qualify, should not count as public theology. So was the justification of slavery by using the Bible, public theology or not? <laughs> 
is the use of the Bible and of theological arguments to propagate racism and nationalism and apartheid and white supremacy, public theologies or not? Is the use of religious doctrines and theological arguments to defend patriarchy and sexism and classism and many other forms of oppression and exclusion and inequalities and injustice or not. There can, after all, be no doubt that all these forms of theology do indeed matter for public life and matter very much. So it is therefore no wonder that many other people prefer to use the expression public theology much more narrowly to exclude these forms of oppressive theologies, much more specifically and only to describe theology that serves the common good, the public good, according to their understanding as, as proper public theology. They argue, for example, that the expression public theology only makes sense in a certain kind of public, a certain kind of public square, namely one characterized by modernity, democracy, the so-called common good, pluralism, citizenship, individual freedoms, including freedom of speech, so-called social cohesion in the service of nation building, you will use very often during this lecture series. For these people, public theology is therefore restricted to the kind of theology that makes it possible for people of faith to participate in such public conversations in, in open and democratic formation of the public opinion in modern public squares, including the powerful public and social media of our time. Then our question becomes what kind of theology can be communicated, shared and understood in this pluralist and democratic public square where no one is supposed to speak with more authority than others. And yet again, it will be immediately clear why so many others then have very strong reservations about this kind of public theology. They simply do not recognize themselves, their social and political contexts, and the kinds of theology they are involved in, in these descriptions of harmonious and open democratic dialogue. They find themselves involved in struggles for truth, in activism for justice, in protest against oppression and resistance, and anger and civil disobedience, often in repression and persecution and even suffering. So are liberation theologies, public theology or not? Are black theologies? Feminist theologies, decolonization theologies, are they public theologies or not? They certainly matter, and they certainly want to matter, but they do not always want to be seen as public theologians. In fact, many of the best known public theologians in many contexts in the world including South Africa. Think of Bayos Nodia, Alan Boussak, Denise Ackerman, Tenjiku Maluleke. Many of the best known public theologians who would therefore not see themselves as public theologians and may even vehemently deny that they are public theologians when public theology is understood in this specific and narrower sense of the word. So our question about the theology of public theology will depend on our understanding of what public theology is 
And there we face legitimate disagreements and serious differences of opinion. Still, this is the second comment. Still, whatever our understanding of public theology may be, it is extremely important to understand and to acknowledge that our views and our actions are influenced by our theological views. By the question who God is for us. We are involved in inaction and silences and looking away and caring more of other priorities than about our common life in the world together. Or whether we attempt to serve democratic cultures and the common good and civil society and nation building. Or whether we are committed to struggles for justice, social justice and liberation. We are all inspired by our respective images of God, even when we may not be fully aware of this. We are reflections of our theopolitical emotions in the words of Kavanaugh. Politics is the practice of the imagination, he says. Our views of public life together are the practices of our imagination, including our imagination of God and ourselves and our identities and callings and lives. So our theologies matter even when we do not know or acknowledge this. This is easy to understand. Our theologies inform us, they orientate us, our views, they motivate us, inspire us, they move us. They help us to see in particular ways ourselves, the world, others, being human, our call in life. They help impact our perspectives, our convictions our values, our priorities, our hopes. Many would go further and argue that what is even more crucial than the ways in which our theologies impact our thoughts are the ways in which the faith communities to which we belong impact our lives, our sense of belonging and our practices, our virtues, our cultures, our habits, our ways of being in the world, in ways of which we are not even aware. Our theological traditions and communities help form us into the kind of people who matter in the kinds of ways in which we matter, for better or for worse, in our community. And society. Precisely for this reason, this is now the third comment. Precisely for this reason, it is impossible to describe the theology of public theology. The theologies, the plural, the theopolitical imaginations forming us to be the kinds of people we are, are simply far too rich and diverse and complex to reduce to any easy summary or description. The theology of public theology is as rich and complex as theology itself. This is why it is great that so many theologians from so many diverse backgrounds participate together in this series of lectures on public theology. This is why the Global Network for Public Theology encourages contextual and intercontextual work so much and learn from one another 
There are so many ways of doing theology that matters. At the moment, I teach Reformed Theology and Public Life at Princeton Theological Seminary, Princeton, New Jersey. I could, of course, speak about the rich and the complex Reformed faith traditions and how they mattered and still matter for our life together in the world in so many ways, at the same time liberating and enriching, as well as oppressive and terrible, as deeply ambiguous as probably most other faith traditions also are. Th this is what I do in all my courses, and that would have been an easy response to our question about the theology of public theology. But others from other contexts, from other traditions, would be able to tell their stories too. About 15 years ago, the ecumenical movement and the Vatican together organized an ecumenical study process called a spirituality of resistance. The idea was to draw on the rich and diverse theological resources from many different traditions in order to learn from one another how to find spiritual resources in our diverse, different theological, geopolitical imaginations that would help us to resist together the globalizing forces of economic injustice and ecological destruction. As faith communities, world faith communities, were, we were all involved in such resistance, but all for our own particular and diverse theological reasons. But I remember how fascinating and how enriching these encounters with other theologians were. Orthodox, Catholic, Anglican, Methodist, Lutheran, Reformed, many others, all witnessing from the depths of their own theological and spiritual resources. So, in response to our question about the theology of public theology, we could speak about the triune God about the incarnated human, crucified, risen and exalted Jesus Christ, the Lord, about the life-giving Spirit of God, about baptism and supper, about worship, prayer, and discipleship, about the church as communion, about the hope for a new heaven and a new earth. And every single word calls up many other words and associations and implications, all of them filled with cultural orientation and ethical direction and existential passion, all of them helping us to live lives that matter. And still, more others, others would have more to say about every single one of these theological worlds, because we all understand them in so many different ways. So this insight leads us to another controversial comment, the fourth one. Namely, that it is not necessary to speak these theological words in public. Public theology does not mean that we necessarily have to talk about God in public. It could, of course, mean this. This is the element of truth and of importance in all confessional theology, in kairos theologies, 
in the public witness of the church, in the church learning to speak publicly, in the words of the ecumenical theologian Keith Clements. It could mean, at least in many places in our world, that the church learns to speak its language of faith publicly so that others hear the theological language of the church and perhaps appreciate these thick descriptions of what the people of faith are. For example, about truth and reconciliation, South Africa's recent experience. Sometimes our faith language can contribute constructively to public reasoning. Sometimes that may be possible and even necessary. But it does not have to be like that. Again, not everyone will agree with this, but this may perhaps be one of the important insights of public theology as it developed over recent decades. It is also possible to speak and to embody, some prefer to say to translate, our theopolitical imagination in such ways that it matters, although we do not speak the language of faith publicly. In the South African context, Russell Botman, the former rector of Stellenbosch University and internationally known public intellectual and leading figure in tertiary education circles in Africa. Russell Botman remains a, a remarkable illustration of this kind of public theologian. He was the one that originally had him of a center for public theology, which eventually became the Bayes Nodeus Center. Himself then became dean and vice rector and director and never led the center himself. Nikukutman did that from the beginning. So when Botman became a public figure, a rector and a public figure, he increasingly spoke less theologically in public. Still, all of us who knew him recognized his theopolitical imagination in everything he said and did. He himself called this his theological logic. His theological logic, the, the way he thought as a theologian, the way his theological views of God formed him and transformed him. The, his theological logic, his way of seeing the world, of understanding life, of dreaming a better future, of working for hope for the coming generations, all of this remained precisely the same. Although, although those who did not know him better, did not know him before, would not hear the theology in his voice and see the theology in his actions of hope that mattered so much. So against the background of all of this, a fifth and a final comment becomes of crucial importance. Although it may seem so impossible, it is indeed important to become increasingly aware of the theology in public theology. Our own public theologies and the public theologies of others in order to discern the spirits together. The question given to me about the theology of public theology is an impossible question to answer, but an extremely important question to keep asking. It should by now be clear that not all public theologies are created equal. In spite of all the controversies and in spite of all the difficulties, it remains of critical importance 
that we increasingly will be able to say no together. Also no to theopolitical imaginations, to the theologics, no to the theologies that may be at work in ourselves and in others and in our world. Precisely because we have been and still remain complicit in silences, making us witnesses of evil deeds, we have to discern the spirits together. We have to learn to name and call out and unmask and be called out and be unmasked. Precisely because theology has been used intentionally and unintentionally to justify and defend and propagate all kinds of supremacies and oppression, we have to discern the spirits together and to be willing to speak truth to power. Precisely because no one is in any position of theological privilege or power or authority to tell others what is right and what is wrong. We have to learn to discern the spirits together, to become sensitive, to listen with care, to be self-critical, to become more aware. The no that public theology has to learn to stay again and again in diverse contexts, ultimately rests on the yes of God. The yes of God to God's work and world and us and all. And therefore the theology of our public theology, as impossible as it may seem, matters. We have to develop the courage to speak together and act together based on our understanding of God's yes, of God's salvation, of the good news of the gospel, of healing and welcoming and reconciliation and the renewal, of justification, sanctification, of joy and well-being and flourishing and life that Christ brought and God's spirit gives. And we have to be able to give account of our understanding of this yes together and to one another and to all and everything. That is the theology of our public theology. 